Hello, in this video I will be showing you how to implement AFGRO's component object model interface with MATLAB. This method of using MATLAB is only applicable for AFGRO versions 5.3.3 and onward. I just wanted to note that this is not a replacement for the AFGRO COM user manual. Uh, these examples are implemented as functions, but you could implement them as scripts or in the command line. All AFGRO MATLAB handles need to be cleared after we use them in MATLAB, otherwise it can cause errors in instantiation. Uh, when an instance of AFGRO is created, all of the properties are set to the default values in order to make it more usable. So if, any, if in any of these examples uh, we don't set a value, then we can assume that they are automatically set to the default value. The first example is just a simple example using run, froze, and predict. What that means is that on this first line, we have to declare the server that has a connection to uh, AFGRO, and we'll use that uh, handle throughout our program to access uh, the predictions and the properties of AFGRO. Um, here we just uh, set a few of our properties. First we set AFGRO.visible equal to true. We do this so that we can see what's happening in AFGRO while we're trying to deb debug our program. Next we set the AFGRO units to English. Um, set these to metric if you want to use metric units. Uh, afgro.model is a center through. I do this uh, to demonstrate that it's actually the default model, but um, I set it here to demonstrate how you would change the model if you wanted to. Uh, then we have afgro.const amplitude spectrum. All this does is uh, set the spectrum to a constant amplitude spectrum. Uh, I set the stress multiplication factor to 14 and then set the initial crack length in the C direction to 0.5. Finally, on this last line, as you can see, there are uh, eight parameters. Um, the first one is for MATLAB, and the rest are just returns from AFGRO. Yeah, so you need to include these, uh, these tildes here. Um, if you don't want to store the value being returned from AFGRO into a variable. Okay. This next example, uh, instead of using run frozen predict, which will stop the program when it's executing, uh, this uh, method will be asynchronous. So it will run in the background instead of stopping the MATLAB program as we go. So the first thing we need to do in order to do that is notice that we have AFGRO passed into the function, meaning that we will create the uh, AFGRO object similar to how it's shown here, and then pass it into a parameter as a parameter into this function. Next, we need to register the predict finish event from AFGRO that uh, if you want more information on that event, you can look in the uh, com user manual. Uh, and then the, we set it to our AFGRO handle, and then in the curly braces, the name of the event, and then the handler that we want to set it to, which I'll cover in a moment. Uh, all of these properties are set the same as we did them last time, or very similar. And then our final line calls afgro.runpredict, and as you can see, we don't set this to any variable because this function doesn't return anything. So after each AFGRO prediction is finished, an event called predict finished is sent to MATLAB. Um, it contains all of the prediction results, uh, so like the cycles, the final stresses, etc. Um, we need to implement an event handler in order to actually receive this information. Uh, right. So the varargin, or varargin, not sure, is a type of uh, variable in MATLAB. It can contain multiple types of elements. So these elements can be accessed, uh, accessed using curly braces, as shown here. 
um, the parameter var argin must be used with these event handlers, otherwise uh, it won't work. Um, down here I cover the uh, the things that are passed into this array-like structure. The first two are uh, mostly to be used just with MATLAB, and the last two just identify what type of the event is. The stuff that we're actually going to be concerned with is at the indexes 3 through the second to last index. Okay. Here I show how uh, var argin is used. Um, then here we have uh, we display the elements of var argin, uh, which the fourth one refers to the cycles, and the fifth one refers to the final crack length. Okay, so. Here, we implement an example that can run multiple predictions uh, asynchronously. Um, we could also choose to run this uh, with run froze predict and just put it in a loop, but in this case we're going to be using an event handler uh, to do this. So as you can see, I implemented it where we input an array of uh, crack lengths, and then uh, those will be set down here and also in the event handler. Uh, up here we set two global variables and we just set that to our inputs. These global variables are defined uh, so that way they can be accessed both by this function and by the event handler at any time. And then the rest of this down here is standard and we should have seen this before. Okay. So here's the event handler for that multiple prediction run. Uh, as you can see, we need to define these two variables as global so that way we can access them. And then we simply uh, input the fir or output uh, the initial crack length, which will be the first thing in the array, and then the cycles, which is the fourth element in var argin. So um, here we just check to make sure that the array isn't empty, uh, and if it is. Uh, then we go, or if it isn't, we go in here, and we set the first element of the array to null. This effects effectively shifts all of the elements of the array left one, and then our first element of the array will now be what was the second element of the array. Then uh, we set the crack length to the new first element of the array, and we run the prediction again, which will in turn trigger this event handler and etc until the program is finished. Okay. This is a uh, advanced models uh, example. It covers two pages. Um, as you can see here we pass in the thickness, hole offset, the is part through crack boolean value, the crack length C and the crack length A and we are going to return uh, the AFGRO error code as a return value, the cycles, final C, final KC. Okay. Uh, in this, we need to set the model equal to uh, advanced uh, in order to access the AFGRO advanced model solutions. Um, and then the first thing we're going to be doing is adding a hole to the model. Um, this is uh, very similar to how you would do it in the user interface. Uh, we're just doing it programmatically. So we add a hole to the model and we call it hole one, and we give it a, uh, a radius or a diameter, excuse me, of 0.5 and a hole offset, which is passed through the function. So in this if else statement, we're checking to see if the boolean we passed as a parameter called is part through is true or false, and if it's uh, true, then we add a uh, an afro corner crack to the solution uh, at the hole, and then if it's false, we add a afro through crack uh, to the solution, and we're going to be adding these to the right side and passing the parameters of the crack lengths, uh, and then down here. 
we set the uh, advanced models property thickness uh, parameter. Now I'll cover beta correction and residual stresses. These will be partial examples that can be fit into your other projects. The implementation of beta correction and residual stresses are very similar. The first column represents the distance from the crack origin. The second and third columns are for the stress distribution ratios of the C and A direction respectively. And when the model contains a through crack, the third column must always be set to a 1 for beta corrections and 0 for residual stresses. So here is how two ways that we can set the beta correction value array. First, we could set it in MATLAB manually, uh, just typing out the first, second, and then third with a semicolon, and this will output a two-dimensional array as shown. Alternatively, we could uh, right-click and create a variable in MATLAB and then uh, paste the data from Excel or another source uh, as shown here. These are two examples of the beta correction and residual stresses implemented in MATLAB. Uh, so first, what you need to do is declare your array like we showed in the last slide. Next, you need to declare the b use beta correction or b apply residual stresses equals true. Uh, this needs to be done before you assign the array of data, uh, otherwise it will throw an error. Next, you uh, set a beta correction data or a residual stress data equal to the array that you defined earlier. And after that, you should be able to proceed with your prediction and they should be applied. Next, uh, I will show you how to create one of these uh, example solutions in MATLAB. Okay. Now I will demonstrate how to run the run multiple prediction function we wrote earlier, and also how to create our own function. Uh, first of all, we need to create an afgro server, uh, a com server. We do that by saying afgro equals actx server, and then in the parentheses we do single quote afgro dot application. Okay, so now we have a functioning uh, afgro.com server. Uh, we can go ahead and say afgro.visible equals true, and that should make it so that we can view afgro. Okay, now all we need to do is call our function. So type run multi predict, and then give it the handle to afgro and then it requires an input array. So for this, uh, it's going to be just crack length. So I'm going to go ahead and do 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 for this example. OK, there we go. So now it's iterating through all of the uh, crack lengths and then outputting the initial crack length and then the total amount of cycles until failure. Next, we need to make a new script to make our own function. So go ahead and hit the plus up here. And then we can type function. And we'll call this, uh, let's see, run froze example. So for this one, we're going to be using uh, beta correction. So we're going to have the user pass in a handle to afgro, and then a beta array. Awesome. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure afgro is set to visible, and then afgro dot units, and make sure that we're in the correct units. Next, we need to uh, make sure that our uh, spectrum is set to const amplitude spectrum. So we can say afgro.const 
and then it'll finish it for us if we have a uh, afgro object instantiated. So const amplitude spectrum. Then we'll set the SMF to, uh, let's say, 14 for this example. Next, we need to set the crack length. So we'll say afgro.crack length C is equal to, uh, let's say, 0.2. All right, now we can implement the beta correction. So uh, we're going to call afgro.beta correction dot b for boolean use beta correction. I'm just hitting tab to autofill here. Equals true. So now we can put in our data. Now we'll call afgro.beta correction dot a for array beta correction data equals and then we'll set that equal to our beta array that was passed in as a parameter. Finally, we're going to call run frozen predict by uh, making sure that we set an array that can receive the values. Um, so we'll set re return the value cycles and then I don't care about all the other parameters for this example so we'll just include tildes here equals afgro.run frozen predict. There we go. Uh, and we'll actually leave out the semicolon so that we can see the output. Okay. We save our script file. And then now we can run it. So we'll come down here, and we already have an afgro object open. So now we can just say uh, run froze example and we need to pass in our afgro object and our beta array so the format of this was covered in the powerpoints so we'll say point 0.1 and then we'll say point 0.9 and then it the final column has to be 1 for all of them because this is a through crack. So 1. And then we'll say 0 0.2, 0 0.8, 1. And that should be sufficient for our example. So and then we'll run that. And there we have it. Uh, it returned 0, which means it was a successful execution and it says that the lifetime prediction was uh, 79,248 cycles. Um, so that's it for this example.